Howdy ho, it is time for the Home Kit Insider Show. It is me, Andrew O'Hara, here with my pal and um, MagSafe evangelist, Stephen Robles. I had to look around. I didn't I didn't have a prepared uh, <laughs> thought on you, and there's a MagSafe charger on my desk. So Hey, it's all right. I mean, I, yeah, I like MagSafe. I still charge every night with MagSafe. So, you know, in the car, use the bucket one in the car. I mean, I don't know if I ever... No, I do plug my phone in directly in the car because the Belkin one, you know, it's just just the magnet. You know, it's not a charger. Yeah. Which one? Are you, which one have you been rocking in the car since we're talking about MagSafe? Right now, I'm still using the ESR one, but today, like after I hang up with you, I am going to finish building my testing rig for MagSafe car mounts. So I've got like three or four MagSafe car mounts, and I'm gonna hook them all up, and I'm gonna attach a phone to them and they're going to slide them down to a ramp into something hard. And we're going to see which ones hold on better than other ones. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That there's going to be a video test kind of thing. Yeah. So I've got awesome. Iotti, Belkin, Iotti, Belkin, um, ESR. I think I got one more in there. I think That's I think pretty I cool. have one more in there. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, that'd be I'm interesting. For a second, I'm, I'm adjusting my headphones. That's that's for the audience. That was for the audience right there. <laughs> so anyway, that'll be fun. No, that's awesome. Well, we actually have a ton of HomeKit news. A bunch of companies, not the typical ones either. A few of our, our regulars, but a bunch of people announced random HomeKit products recently, and uh, we're gonna touch on all of them. It's pretty cool that uh, that's the deal now. First of all, I'm excited about this one. We've talked about smart shades in the past and blinds from hunter douglas and now eve is getting in the game which we love eve they have all their home kit products you know no hub they got their switches and light strips and all that kind of stuff and they've partnered with <laughs> i'm going to try and say this name you can correct me if i'm wrong on the pronunciation but coise coise <laughs> i don't know coise is it it's just weird hear you saying like French sounding words in your southern accent. So, yeah. You're, this early in the morning, you gotta you gotta diss me like that. Listen, je veux que le matin ignore les noms que j'ai dit hier la nuit. Okay, I know a little French. Okay, I mean I know how to pronounce all these words, but co co from the south of France. <laughs> yeah, it's from Nice. <laughs> uh, pronounced nice here in America. So anyway, Eve is sponsoring with Colise to make some motor blinds. These are going to be Eve motor blinds. Will not require a hub like all the other Eve products, which is awesome. Smart blinds will work with HomeKit, of course, and they're going to be thread enabled, which is awesome. We love to see you thread stuff. Eve was one of the first companies to really kind of put thread in their plugs and their other kind of stuff. So really cool. And this will be available early 2022. So we are a few months away from this, but I don't know. I'm excited about these and they look good. Absolutely. I love home get shades. I think we all need more of them. So I'm excited. We're going to have some thread enabled versions to try out. Very cool. So I'm excited. So that is that. We'll put a link to uh, our article in the show notes. Then this next brand, I had not heard of this one before. This is going to be a pronunciation episode where we try to pronounce a bunch of different things. Misa, I assume, M-Y-S-A. Andrew's not helping me at all. Misa, Misa, Nyasa. Anyway, MYSA, they have a new switch for electric baseboard heaters, which I guess it's a thermostat if you have baseboard heaters. I think I had these back up in New York. It would be, you know, the heaters on the bottom. But anyway, so it's a new switch. It's coming to North America. And I just have to say, I had not heard of this brand before, but their switches and thermostats look really cool. I mean, they're futuristic, very clean, simple design, just has little lights basically for arrow up arrow down and then whatever the number it is the numbers like these little dot lights we'll put the image in the chapter art if you're listening uh, to the podcast but these will be home kit enabled and i guess these are also part of a line of products they also have other thermostats not just for heaters available that are home kit have you ever heard of this brand or do you have any other stuff nope never heard of them yeah it's pretty wild they have a smart thermostat for air conditioners and then they have one for in-floor heating and baseboard heaters. It's like $120 for the air conditioner one, $150 for the electric baseboard heaters, which is their new product. But I was curious. I didn't know if these would 
work with systems that have you know heat and air you know like i have central air and you know i use the ecobee thermostat which does both you know it could be cool can be heat can be auto and all that kind of stuff so it doesn't seem like it could be one of those like dual things where it can do both but i don't know i really like the way this looks so i don't know looks cool home kit boom <laughs> So that's the uh, Misa electric baseboard heater. Then next, this is something very interesting because we spoke about this on a past episode. We were hoping for something like an occupancy sensor where not just a motion sensor, but if uh, there could be some sensor that tells if a person is sitting in a room, even if they're still, so the lights don't get turned off on them. And this looks like, I think, one of the first. This is by a company, Wozart. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's like Mozart, but with a W. So maybe it's Wozart. 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 Yeah. And so they have an occupancy, an occupancy sensor. It's the Sense Pro. And they say it uses a combination of methods. They're dubbing it true occupancy, including thermal imaging and a couple other sensors to see if someone is actually in the room, to see if there's an occupancy and even if someone's motionless, it can tell. Unfortunately, it's micro USB, whatever. You know, all these companies still doing it. You know, switch to USB-C. Come on. But I am very curious about this product. It will be HomeKit uh, compatible. But as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but is occupancy a thing in HomeKit yeah. yet? Yes. There's okay. motion detected and occupancy detected. Oh. Both those are two different um I can't think characteristics or whatever in HomeKit. Okay. Well, that's pretty sweet then. If you could just get one of these, it looks like a black little half circle, like a half moon thing. This also has an IR blaster built in, which we've talked about like the SwitchBot hub in the past where it has an IR blaster and can control other dumb devices. I think an Akara hub also has an IR blaster. So if you have like an air conditioner window unit or you want to control a dumb TV or just something that would use an IR remote, this occupancy sensor can also act as that because it has a built-in IR blaster. So this thing looks very interesting. USB-C, oh no, 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 I'm sorry. No, it was micro USB. But uh, no availability or pricing yet. So not sure when this will be available in the States or how much it will cost, but I can tell you 100% I'm going to try this thing because I'm curious to see how this works as opposed to a motion yeah. sensor. So you think you're going to try this out? Yeah, I'll try anything. I mean, I haven't had, t- I don't know. I haven't had too much of a thing yet. I'm not sure what I want to do. And I haven't really tried because some of the ones I have now claim occupancy and I haven't done enough testing to look at like what they're triggering as occupancy versus motion. And if there's any difference in what they're reporting in. Um, Hmm. But I know several different sensors I have now do report like occupancy and motion. So I have not tried it enough. So uh, am I, I'm going to do a quick Google here. Are there any other HomeKit occupancy sensors? I know you had talked about that one, but it wasn't HomeKit or something. Well, that's what I'm saying is several that I know I do have report occupancy. I don't know which ones they are like off the top of my head, but I don't know because in terms of like your automations, for some sensors, they're going to detect motion, but they're going to report it as motion and occupancy. Because if there's motion in the room, there's probably occupancy in the room. Not always the same thing, but uh, that's the general idea. So there are sensors that kind of report both back, but I don't know if they're making a distinction between motion and occupancy, or if they're just doing it so that you can run your triggers off of occupancy versus gotcha. motion. So I'm not sure. Okay. Let's see. Well, I just you found find something. I found a brand called Hyom. <laughs> it's H I H I O M E, which, I mean, I'm not a branding expert, but that is a difficult word to grok at a at a glance. It's home, but you just add a random I in there. They are claiming that they have. A the f- this is the first this is what they claim the first true occupancy sensor for your home, and it is HomeKit enabled. It also connects with Philips Hue to automate smart home devices. It 
buying it, there's a door sensor and a, what is this called? A, uh, I don't know, home power pack. This is interesting. We're going to do some more research on it. But apparently there's a home core, which is like the hub. And then they have door sensors. And yeah, this is interesting. I will put a link in show notes to this. Listeners, if any of you out there have a hum uh, <laughs> occupancy sensor. God, I hate hearing you say it. I hate yeah, hearing you I say know. that word. I hate hearing myself say it. It's pretty terrible. If you have one of these hum cores and door sensors. Why did you say <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing it on purpose. I'd rather hear you say moist for five minutes straight oh, than no, that I weird I word. I won't say that. I will not say that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so looking at my stuff here, I have, this is my Ecobee, and the orange one in the center is your occupancy, and then your green one is your motion. So Ecobee is doing both. Uh, occupancy and motion but i have not played around enough to know if it's able to to differentiate between when there's just motion in the room of like i don't know a a lamp falling over versus like a person walking through because usually lamps fall over in your rooms when no one's in there right well this uh wozart one says it uses you know thermal detection so i guess heat yeah so unless you have a super hot lamp in your room, I think you'd be okay if it if one falls over. But this curious, I I want to get into these occupancy sensors very soon. I think it'd be pretty sweet. So anyway, we'll put links to all that in show notes, listeners. You can look at the Wozart occupancy sensor and the Kim occupancy yeah. sensor. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> all right, IKEA then said their air purifier that looks like a coffee table. We had talked about it on a past episode. It is available soon. They announced pricing. It's $172. Didn't for... we have pricing the first time around? We did have pricing. What is announced is the official HomeKit support. Uh, it was unknown whether or not it would be HomeKit, and they actually have it listed now on their website. It will work with Amazon, Echo devices, and Apple HomeKit. So that'll be nice. If we you definitely had HomeKit confirmation the first time, too. Maybe did we? we put it on their website, but we definitely did. Yeah, because we okay. wouldn't have reported it on the show if they didn't. Right, okay. Yeah, that was the news, that it was HomeKit. Um, oh. Yeah. Okay, well then, uh, maybe this is not news. <laughs> is it available to buy? Everyone don't care. If it's that, See, that would be news. That would be news. Right. Is it available I will say, I haven't gotten anything from IKEA's PR this week. Like, obviously, I've gotten a you know, bunch of stuff from them recently with their new uh, wall picture, wall frame, frame picture, wall speaker and <laughs> their <laughs> lamp ah, and their lamps so mm-hmm. like I, ikea pr has been reaching out a bunch recently and i've not heard a thing about this since it launched so uh, yeah we had confirmation of home kit before um well just getting that pricing yeah some of the news has said it'll be available in october which we are now in october but it is not officially like you can't click buy now so just kidding okay. we, will, we will report back when it's officially official uh available. we're reporting that it is october uh which <laughs> yes, was the month exactly. that it said it would be in and yes. sometime in this month it may be for sale yes and when it's actually available for your home we'll let you know <laughs> I'm okay. watching our subscriber numbers fall off. No, no, time. they love it. They love the mispronunciations. No. All right, this last one, super weird product. Um, it is a camera, indoor HomeKit camera. It is called the HomeAm by Zorachka. That sounds like <laughs> Zarathustra. I don't know. But it is a quote-unquote high-end HomeKit camera. And I'm not exactly sure what is high end about it. It is also, it has USB-C, which is nice, but it's only 1080p, which again, HomeKit Secure Video is only 1080p, so makes sense. But it has a bunch of things like image something, gamma correction, color correction, a bunch of, looks like quality improvements. Like it, like there's a bunch of little features and in, in that kind of stuff for imaging, but Still only 1080p, so it's like I'm not sure how much detail you're going to get from this anyway. But get this, Andrew. I think it's $400. $400. It seems high. <laughs> for this indoor 
wired 1080p security camera. It does connect to both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz wireless networks, but I don't know. Is it HSV or just HomeKit? This says it is HomeKit. (laughs) I do not see HomeKit secure video. Cool. Well, I know nothing about this product, but listeners, buy something else. (laughs) By right. the Eve, the Logitech. Yeah, yeah. Something different. I yeah. don't know what they're talking about, but it seems really high. It seems very uh, high. Especially not having HSV. I swear, if they try to like push some other subscription plan on you, because I don't know where you're storing that cloud stuff then. I don't know. So see, once on payment, $400. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, uh... Advanced HomeKit secure video features. Well, that says HSV. Well, I feel like (laughs) they said HomeKit secure video features. Apple HomeKit technology provides an easy, secure way to control your HomeKit enabled thing. (laughs) So, oh, recording video using HomeKit. So, okay. Okay. HomeKit Ah, secure video. Still, though, I don't know if that's worth $400. I don't know. It just seems really expensive. <laughs> it has our own app, which uh, also connects to it, and there's like little tools and stuff in that. And I mean, it says you can do like activity zones and all that. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. It does home kit secure video, but I don't know why. I don't see the the proposition here. I'm not sure why it's five hundred, four hundred dollars. But anyway, get a Logitech Circle View, listeners. I got two of those. I love them. So <laughs> home kit secure video, they work great. Um, if you were going to get a home secure video camera today, Andrew, being uh, in October of 2021, with what's available now, which one would you go with? The Eve. Mm. Now, the Eve is indoor, right? Mm-hmm. If you had to do one that to, would... Okay. To yeah. be fair, the Logitech Circle View, it's outdoor, but it doesn't come with like an outdoor power supply or anything like that. Yeah. So you got to get hacky or something like that so like the camera itself is like water resistant but without any outdoor power connection option a lot of people are going to be just yeah. you know hacking something together or hoping and yeah like i did and i killed one a circle view but the, <laughs> then i got stuff i got the right stuff and and they've lived on uh, the ones that i had so the e1 is indoor Ufi has outdoor cameras but they're not a home kit secure video right you need the Ufi app you have to pay for that thing uh, i think so i can't remember anymore Ufi has a lot of cameras uh, i'm not 100 percent. they have a lot of cameras i was listening to uh, marco arman on atp he was talking about trying to find outdoor security cameras and he resorted to kind of what i did was basically buying indoor cameras and using them outdoor and hoping the rain doesn't kill them uh, it said it killed one or two of his, but he went with the Logitech Circle View in the end because it is rated for outdoor if you could figure out the power stuff. With the, uh, the Eufy cameras, I'll put a link to their website, but oh my goodness, they have so many options. Um, I remember I did use one of their, no, I used the Acara G2H camera, which is cool because it acts as an Acara hub and it's also a camera, home kit, and I actually put it like in a window and you can actually get pretty good video if you have a window pointed in the direction you want an outdoor camera to point you can get pretty good video from just like sticking it in a window and like see that's what i was annoyed by with logitech with the circle view is their circle two camera they had all these accessories for they had all these different mounts they had outdoor power supply kits that you could get and they had a window mount steven you could put it inside of your window and there was an adhesive that would put it like it was a ring of adhesive and it would stick it to your window and there was actually a companion setting that would like reduce the the glare that you would get from the infrared cameras as it would reflect off Mm. of the window so like they had thought about all of that and then we have like the new one and they don't have any of these accessories and it's really annoying i feel like most of these accessories would still be good like why isn't there an interior window mount and option to toggle off the infrared lights and why isn't there an outdoor power supply kit the thing works outside 
and they discontinued their power supply kit. Yeah. Why? It's annoying because then you got to do weird stuff like I did and get from Amazon these like rubber boxes that you put the power cable in and all this stuff. Yeah. Not cool. I'm glad you specified what weird stuff because that could have been just <laughs> wide ranging. It's, I will try to find, I'll put a link to the last episode where I talked about it because I basically had to get a weatherproof like outlet cover so the extension cord can like plug into an outlet and it's weather protected and where the Logitech Circle View camera a plug <laughs> plugs into the extension cord, you need to waterproof that because otherwise it's going to be laying in your yard. It's going to be getting wet. And so I found these like green like cable. They're for this purpose. They're cable protectors or whatever and it's meant to like you plug it in and you close the shoebox green thing over the connection it's weather tight for the most part and it worked to keep my cameras alive and they didn't mess up after that so i'll i'll find those links if our listeners want to want to try it i would love to uh, talk about a couple other camera questions for you but before we do we say don't buy the 400 hundred dollar home kit camera what you should buy is a Nebbia by Moen shower hit because they are sponsoring this episode. And Andrew and I both What a have, transition. <laughs> you like the transition? Thank you very much. Thank you. If you have not heard us talk about Nebbia before, uh, they've been a longtime friends of the show of HomeKit Insider and Apple Insider. Nebbia started because they wanted to save water and their shower heads save 45% of water over normal shower heads. They were developed by previous NASA, Tesla, and Apple engineers. And none other than Tim Cook, Apple's CEO, was actually one of their first investors. The Nebbia co-founder also met with Tim Cook, gave him a prototype, and even Tim Cook loved this shower. So why should you get this shower? Well, not only does it save water, it is also easy to install. If you're not super do-it-yourself, don't stress. I had never changed a shower head before. And when I got the Nebby by Moen, I was like, well, let me try it. It didn't take me more than like 15 minutes. They give you all the instructions, all the parts you need. So it's easy to change out. And it's awesome because they have two models right now. You can order the Nebby by Moen Spa Shower, which is a height adjustable shower. It atomizes the water. That's a fancy word for it. But basically makes an enveloping water experience, like a spa experience in your shower. Also has this little magic wand attachment, which is really cool. I highly recommend. So you can get the Nebby by Moen Spa Shower. And they also have for pre-order, and you can get free shipping on this one, is the Nebbia by Moen Quattro shower head, which it's shower head and you can like take it off and use it as a wand and then it magnetically attaches back. I don't know, Andrew, do you actually have one of these? Not the Quattro. So I have the the regular Nebbia by Moen shower head. Yeah. And yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. I, I'm going to recommend the Quattro. I really like the Quattro because there are four spray settings and there's like a high pressure setting there's like a rain shower setting there's four settings and i love doing that my kids like messing with the different settings they really like the navy by moment spa showers but also if you have a family with varying height of people like namely kids and then adults the navy by moment spa shower like height adjustableness of that shower is pretty sweet <laughs> Yeah, Andrew, he's, I'm killing this. I just can't and get over the... <laughs> if you have varying heights of people in your family, like I just, just imagine saying. like the stickers on the back with like a family and there's like the mom and the dad and the children. Yeah. And then it, but in exactly. apparently Steven's world, most are just straight across, just straight well, height. You got the Everyone's kids, the same. But if adults. you're someone weird who's got different heights on your family... That's right, that's right. It's great uh, for different heighted uh, families. It's awesome. There's also multiple different colors. <laughs> you got white and chrome. Matte black, black and chrome, and a spot resistant nickel. That's the finish that I got. Which color is your Nebby by Moen spa shower? So all of our stuff is like this, um, uh, like the brushed bronze color in there. So we have like the the matte black one, which fits in really well, even though it's not the exact same yeah. finish. It still blends in really well. And yeah. I think our favorite thing about it is like our old shower, just a regular shower head. You'd stand in there, and if you like touched a wall. Somehow it was like warm under the water, but if you were anywhere else in the shower, it was like yeah. cold and you'd like touch a wall and it was like ice cold. And I don't know how it, that was always the case, yeah. but like we put this, the Nebby by Sh Moen shower head in and the whole shower is warm. Like wherever you are, it is warm, which yeah. is, it is really cool. And you can like, if you touch a wall with your elbow, your back, it like, it's actually warm. So you can like bump into your walls right. and not like shriek. So it's really cool. It just it's really like this spa, like you're like walking into a spa and yes. the whole place is warm and comfy. It's really cool. Warm and comfy. 
They can take that and run with that as a tagline. Navy by Moen. Tagline. Warm and comfy. Warm and comfy. <laughs> Warm and comfy. They also have some shower accessories that will match it, like a shower shelf with little hooks and stuff, and they got towel hooks. I love the Nebby by Moen Spot Shower. My whole family loves it. My kids, you know, getting kids to take a shower can be a challenge sometimes. You know, if you, you people know what I mean out there with your parents. But they actually love doing the Nebby by Moen Spot Shower. They like the wand. They like changing the settings on the Quattro. So it's pretty cool. And right now, you can get a deal. The Nebula by Moen Spa Shower starts at just $199. And for HomeKit Insider listeners, we have a deal. The first 50 people after this episode who use the promo code HomeKit at Nebula.com will get 10% off Nebula products. And again, Nebula doesn't do sales with a lot of people, but they've partnered with us for a long time. And so it's a great deal to jump on. So go to Nebula, N-E-B-I-A dot com slash HomeKit to check out what they have to offer. First 50 people to use the code HOMEKIT when checking out will save 10% on Nebbia products. And if you do a pre-order product like the Quattro, you can get free shipping in the U.S. Nebbia.com slash HOMEKIT. Use the promo code HOMEKIT to save 10%. Our thanks to Nebbia. That is awesome. Yes. You can get like two Nebbia showers instead of that $400 camera. Absolutely. Th- yeah. That's a great bookend. I loved it. Perfect. Absolutely. Totally yeah. agree. Do you know how um do you know how warm the inside of a tauntaun is? <laughs> I know Luke Skywalker knows. I I don't know. Do you know? Yeah, it's about lukewarm. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> wow. Listen, I'm I'm a pretty big <laughs> <laughs> I gotta recover after that one. That's that's intense. <laughs> oh, I've been a Star Sorry. Wars fan for a long time. I have not heard that. You've joke. never heard that one. It's a pretty good one. That is an amazing joke, and it seemed really relevant to the conversation. So, I'm in. I'm in awe. I'm just in awe of that joke. I, I don't know if I go. Should on. I bow? You, bow right <laughs> you now. could take. If we if we had a, an applause track, I would have played it right now. Maybe I'll put it in in post. Stephen's gonna go jump in a cold Nebbia by Moen shower right now to clear. Wow. His head. Luke Wolf. <laughs> just pulled that out of there too. That was that was impressive. Well, I, I don't even I don't even know how to transition out of that. It was so that was so amazing. I think we peaked in the episode right there. But <laughs> I, do, I do have another question because I think you talked about this a while ago. Someone asked me on Twitter, I forget who it was, but they were looking for an outdoor home kit camera with a floodlight. And I know you have the Arlo floodlight which works mm-hmm. with the Arlo Hub, is compatible with HomeKit. But I recommended this, and I, I don't have it, but I thought you did, and I'm looking at the website now. The Natatmo Smart Outdoor Camera with Siren, it has, it is at least Natatmo's website now says it is compatible with HomeKit Secure Video. So am I right? Didn't, didn't you have one of these? I did not have one of those. Okay. The main reason is I did not have... If, I, if I'm remembering all my facts right, then a Tatmo camera requires hard wiring. Right. And you replace an existing sconce with the Natatmo camera. Gotcha. Unfortunately, at my home, I am limited in sconces. <laughs> and I do not have one that I can commit to a camera. If I had a spot to mount that, I would absolutely 100% pick that up. Because their hardware is exceptional, and you got HSV, you got the spotlight, you got everything you need right there. Yeah. If you need a wireless version that you can mount anywhere that's battery powered, the Arlo Pro 3 floodlight cam. They have a dedicated camera, or uh, sorry, well, yeah, they have dedicated cameras, they have dedicated floodlights, but the Arlo Pro 3 floodlight cam is like combining them both together. So there is the floodlight that you can turn on and off via yeah. HomeKit and Siri, so I can just tell you know, Siri to turn on the floodlight camera or the outs or the backyard camera or the backyard lights and it'll turn the floodlight on really handy. But you also have the camera built into it and that camera can trigger the floodlight and you've got both. It doesn't have HomeKit secure video, but it does work with HomeKit. I can pull it up. I can see it on like home cam on my Apple TV. If I were like looking at all the cameras in the house. So everything else works, just no HomeKit secure video. Gotcha. Do you need the Arlo Hub for that floodlight? I believe so. Some of their newer ones, they've been transitioning to like a Wi-Fi option, but I believe you do need the Arlo Hub for it. 
but and their the what I always liked about their their hub is that their range is so spectacular. Like mm. the fact that I can have the one camera out at the chicken coop, like all the way at the back of our yard. That's crazy to me that it can reach that far. And we've got like a brick house and it's like still getting that signal out there. So I think that's really impressive. So it works really well if you've got like a, a lot of times people mount these cameras like on their house, like facing down. Also helpful away from your house, facing at your house. So if you have trees or anything in your yard that you're able to like mount this on, you can mount it facing your house and get uh, a great view too. So it just, it really depends on your setup, but you don't have to worry about range. If it was Wi-Fi, you're not going to get range out there. So this right. has that option. I believe it also gives you, don't quote me on this, I think local recording with an SD card into your base station. So gotcha. you have that option. Uh, should your Wi-Fi go out or something, you're still going to get local recordings to the base station. That's pretty cool. You can even get that solar panel and things too mm-hmm. to, to charge it out there. That looks pretty cool. So the Natatmo one... Looking now, yeah, you do have to replace good call <laughs> using the word sconce, uh, just, just pulling go. that out. That was pretty good. But, yes, this is Home Care Video. Um, the Natatmo one, it's only 1080p, but, again, Home Care Video is only 1080p. We'd love for that to change. You can record locally on the micro SD card on the Natatmo. You can also get it with Siren or without Siren on that. So I do think it's a really good option um, I might, I don't know, new house stuff. This would probably be the outdoor camera to do because weatherproof. I like it a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> weatherproof, you just need direct line. Uh, home secure video. If you're building and you, can, and you can like dedicate your power to that, that's a good option. It's just really whether or not you've got power you can dedicate to. Unfortunately, most people don't or most people don't want to deal with wiring and mess something up. Um, mm-hmm. Which is where the Arlo comes in. Yeah, very cool. We'll put links and show notes to both of those. That is that's pretty cool. Get those cameras, not 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 that four hundred dollar one. <laughs> I don't know what that one's about. So, okay, real quick, I put this in a follow up. We'll spend like two seconds on it because it's not really home kit related. It's just home related. But pillows. We talked about sleep tracking last time, and we actually had a couple people on Twitter interested in that and recommended um, other apps. I'll try to find those to put in the show notes. But have you? ever done like one of these like fancy weird pillows andrew like like a buckwheat or something like that um no no not buckwheat you didn't do buckwheat that's um, the, that's the hollow no. h-u-l-l-o hollow pillow nope i've not tried that i i have done other pillows like usually they're like a down pillow but sometimes they're too like too fluffy so i like mix with down pillows and like synthetic polyfill pillows um I have one like memory foam pillow, but I like it because it's like memory foam on one side and um, softy f- floof on the other. <laughs> so you can like rotate it if you're like, I want something more firm or I want something softer. So yeah, I have I love pillows. I really want to try one of like the charcoal pillows and like they always look really cool and sleek and like they're marketing, you know, this pillow advertising, uh, <laughs> the big pillow advertising people. Uh, so yeah, they've almost got me to like buy one of these pillows, but they're still fairly expensive. And I'm like, on part, like the rational part of my brain says, what really is going to be the difference? I don't really care that there's charcoal. It just claims to be really like cool and comfortable and different than memory foam. But is it? I don't know. So I haven't bought one yet. Is this the Makota pillow? That I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's several there's different several. brands that have like these, this new style of charcoal pillows. This is, like they're just <laughs> sorry this one is supposedly infused with bamboo charcoal to create next level comfort experience interesting yeah see they use words like that and i'm like psh, sold i want that's, next level comfort but it's also a pillow i don't know how much of a difference there is and some pillows can be stupidly priced yeah so. this is 150 dollars for a pillow but yeah, see. it is uh, perforated. There's like holes in the pillow, which yeah. I guess helps with ventilation. Sure. If it really was like that comfortable and lasted that long, I would be like, okay, spending more money on a pillow. But mm. well, I've been on a pillow quest trying to find the perfect pillow and I did the buckwheat pillow. Oh, the perfect pillow quest, the perfect pillow quest. Yeah. And I tried a pillow cue for the perfect pillow quest. And so I'm, I'm currently trying the pillow cube, which is specifically for side sleepers. 
you try to sleep on your back on this pillow, you get scoliosis. So you don't, you can't sleep on your back on this pillow. <laughs> it's just for side sleeping. And uh, it's an interesting pillow. I'd be curious if any of our listeners have tried the pillow cube. That's the one I'm currently trying. I tried the hollow with buckwheat. Let me just say, listeners, don't do the buckwheat. <laughs> I did not. I could have told you. Did you hear my reaction? Yes. I could have told you that. The buckwheat. Before you started. You should be supposed, well, supposedly you can adjust the firmness by adding and removing buckwheat. And buckwheat are like these little like shell husks. And you literally have to like pour them inside the pillow or pour them out. It is the most miserable experience. You <laughs> thought that sounded like a good idea. You're like, oh, I can adjust this firmness. Listen. I, by counting my buckwheats. I heard it on a podcast. Why well, is going to want to sponsor a Home Kit Insider now? And I'm going to have to know. Uh, no, I wouldn't. Don't be- buy things you hear off podcasts. <laughs> Except for Nebbia by Moen. Except for Nebbia by Moen's spot shower. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that pillow is not good. So, anyway, listeners, I'm curious what you have found in your pillow quests. And if you have found any of these fancy internet po- pillows that are actually good. Uh, Casper has a pillow. I tried theirs. It was man. Yeah, I wanted to try Casper. I was thinking the um, uh, purple has a pillow right. that I just came out with that looked neat. Yes. I get suckered in by all of these, and I've, I've, I've still not found a, a perfect pillow. See? It's, it's a difficult quest. Uh, the ca- it is. The it's cast- frustrating, and I buy yeah. a lot of pillows. <laughs> it is. I've returned many, too. I've returned the buckwheat. I returned the Casper. It was fine. Did you return, return all of the individual buckwheats? Did they count them? <laughs> it was, packing that thing up was a, a chore, let me just say. Uh, the pillow cube has been the, the longest lasting. I'm going to at least keep it. I'm not going to return it. But I really want a pillow that you can sleep any which way, like side, back, or otherwise. And the pillow cube upside is... Upside down, back, Upside down, like a bat, vampire, whatever. But, uh, yeah, this... It's just for side sleepers. So anyways, listeners, this week the call is pillows. <laughs> Tell us what pillows you're using. Maybe one day it'll be like a smart pillow, like a sleep tracking smart pillow. That feels like probably one of the best products to put sleep tracking in. I love yeah. how like a lot of our comments that we got about the sleep tracking stuff with people liked it, but they're like, you named five. Like, can you give us like a recommendation or best paid versus best free and stuff like uh, that? Okay. And what is our response? Let's talk about pillows. <laughs> Well, let's I will say step. I will say this sleep adjacent. I will say this. The sleep tracking provided by Apple directly. I don't find that information super useful and glanceable or even easy to get to. So if you want a free option, I do like my sleep watch app. It's called sleep watch. I, I put the link. I put the link last week. I'll put it again this week. But I like the little graphs. It shows you for sleeping and all that. So that's the one I would recommend. I, the pillow one was like editor award winning or whatever. So I'm going to try that. I think it's paid, but I'll try it. Let's <clears throat> see what everybody says. So I will say this about the paid versus the free. I do not trust free apps most of the time. And especially when it comes to something like health data, I don't trust free ones. Now, the, usually there's going to be some sort of paid tier that you'll get basic sleep tracking for free or basic health monitor for free and then there's like a paid thing and those i can see that's just their business model yeah. but if it's like a free app overall you are the customer and they're selling your data mm. and even if they're saying no i'm not selling your data they're probably selling your data <laughs> like there's a whole thing about like those weather apps and how many yeah. weather apps are just taking like how many weather apps are free yeah they're taking all that data and they're selling it that's not good and many of the top ones were even reporting that nope we don't take any of your data and yet they were doing it anyway and they were selling it yeah so especially with something like my health or my location i'm not entrusting that to a free app because they need to make money there's nothing mm. wrong with them needing to make money but the fact that they have to do it somehow and if it's not through ads or something else they're selling your data and i'm not even going to like trust it there's no way for like you as a user to audit that even apple's like privacy stuff like that they post like on the app store yeah. that's all like um like developer submitted so they're saying they're not doing anything we're not collecting data and they can realistically be doing some of it anyway obviously health data there's a lot of permissions going into that between the health app and those yeah. things so if you don't allow permissions to certain stuff then sure you can also usually i believe like allow it to to write data but not read data and you can you can control those. That is all very secure. But just going with the 
like, oh, I downloaded this free app that allows me to track all my sleep and it's free. Mm. Then there's no paid things in it and it's just free for everything. They're making money off you one way or the other. Gotcha. I was like, I have to tell my daughter to stop playing a flute. <laughs> Please stop playing the tin whistle I'm recording. Uh. So for our audio listeners and our video listeners, if you keep this in, I had to tell one of my kids to stop playing a tin whistle in the living room. And I will say intercom, back to HomeKit, <laughs> intercom has been a very helpful feature because when I'm here recording, rather than get up and go uh, like tell them to stop, I just intercom and it comes out of the HomePod. So that works out great. I've been loving intercom, just saying, <laughs> just randomly. My, only, my whole thing with, with those things is like in the house, there's almost like too many ways to communicate. Like mm. you could just shout, like shouting is still an option. <laughs> um, I employ that a lot, yes. You can text and you can just tell Siri to text for you. Mm. Like text my wife this. Um, you can also use like walkie talkie, which is handy because then right. you can just like raise, talk, and put your wrist down, and it pops right out of their wrist wherever they are. Because if you don't know what room they're in, which right. you know which home pod are you going to go through, which I guess there is the option to go to the whole house and just like hit everything. So that's a possibility. Yeah. And then of course you have intercom. So it's like which one <laughs> is the most appropriate. Uh, well, There's just a lot of options. for having three kids, I like the option that startles everyone and gets them to stop what they're doing immediately. And intercom is great for that because it, my voice comes booming out of the home pods saying, stop playing the whistle. And it works great. And uh, it's wonderful. Uh, so, Andrew, I want to end. With, we'll, we'll come back to the sleep tracking apps and stuff. I just downloaded the pillow app. And I'm curious to see what it does. There's your purchase for the episode. Yep, there it is. Well, it, it hasn't prompted me to like upgrade yet or maybe i bought it in the past is it a one-time purchase yeah i I think it is a one-time purchase okay okay well then i will try that the sleep watch the sleep watch app is free to use but then they have a premium tier so you can pay for it i just don't so anyway i will try the the pillow one it has a beautiful design i mean i like this yeah it's really really cool looking i love the look of the app it's very like sleepy time looking with yeah. its purples and it's nice it's nice so we'll, we'll follow up with that I'll, I'll use it this week and, and come back at it check out um i don't know if you tried it but like auto sleep auto sleep tracker something like those lines that i talked about last time see what you think of that one too yeah. um i use pillow and auto sleep as probably the two main ones okay. aside from apple's tracking auto and my sleep. mattress is tracking <laughs> and one day maybe your pillow will even track maybe Honestly, for the automatic tracking, I feel like a pillow would be ideal. Obviously, the bed would be as well. But for something a little smaller of a device, a pillow no should know when your head is on it. Like that would be great if the pillow could could just do that. Anyway, auto sleep. Okay, so let's just end with what's going on with your computer. You said you're using a laptop right now as we record this episode. What happened to your Mac Pro, dude? Okay, <laughs> so that we're gonna get technical words now okay right? all right dfu mode oh wow. um it was a it was a whole thing like so it started with like not being able to record for our podcast we had issues there um and then it wouldn't reboot yeah and then like right. you're like text me like that day like the next day oh is it working yet no uh i had spent like several days trying to triage this uh through the weekend going to the to early part of the week that we're recording this yeah um and <laughs> it was still not turning on so i i went to go do a trying to like streamline this a little bit because there's a lot of steps but i tried to do a a a reinstall of the os like to uh, repair like a repair build of the os and it's like i don't you don't have enough space i had like 15 gigs of space i needed like 30 gigs of space so i couldn't do it so i had to actually put my mac into target disk mode connect it to another mac Mm. delete some files like out of my downloads folder that um were like these things like my home kit inside of recordings like before editing them so i Right. had duplicates i'm like Psh, we'll clear out that space so I deleted those um and then i go back try to reinstall it again so now i do the try to do the reinstall as it's reinstalling mac os uh it craps out on itself after the reboot it like come, it like goes through a whole bunch of stuff thinks a whole lot downloads things starts doing the install then stops uh so again uh, it like failed so i'm like bah. 
So now I need to make sure that I can just do a, a clean install, like wipe right. the disk, do a fresh install, screw it. So I put it back into target disk mode, clear out my um, uh, user folder, right. copy that to an external drive on uh, my connected Mac. That worked fine. Uh, you guys are probably yelling, did you have a backup? Yes and no. I have like a backup of like my main folders, but I don't back up things like my downloads folder because it can get really massive and I'm yeah. in a bit of a data crunch at the moment just because of how much video we're creating and I need to get more storage and my 20 terabyte drive just died. So like that needs to get fixed. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm like in a data crunch. Like I, I couldn't like back up like whole thing. Well, fortunately I did have enough space to get my downloads folder off and the rest of the user folder. So all of my stuff is now perfectly backed up. So uh, I got everything backed up. I go to do the, the install and now it will not boot into recovery assistant. It just like, mm. when it comes on, it just like thinks for a whole long time. And then it goes to recovery. Um, sorry, it won't boot into recovery mode. And instead it re boots into recovery assistant, which is used to like reset your password. Oh. I'm like, I don't need to reset my password. I know my password. I just need to like wipe this. But there was no option. Like you just literally just boots into this weird assistant and no option to like, you know, get into disk utility or do any of that crap. So mm. um, I connected again to my other Mac and we're going to just do a wipe using configurator. So there's like this power thing you do, like I, I believe to put in like DFU mode where you hold down the power button while it's disconnected and you stick the power cord in, hold the power button down for another three or so seconds to put it into like this DFU repair mode, right? right. So I connected to my other Mac, opened up configurator two, and it's like, your Mac is borked and it will not do anything. And it's like, you need to um, like reinstall. I was like, okay, that's fine. Like I got to do something anyway, right? I knew it was already screwed up. So I do that. And then it's like failed. We could not do it. We got through three of the four steps, but we could not like reboot, reinstall, whatever it was trying to do. So it's like, now you need to revive your T2 chip. That's your, that's the next step that you have to do. That's not good. So I did that. And I think that actually did work. I think it did revive with the T2. So it, it did wipe the everything, revive the T2. Okay. So I boot up the machine and bam, we're in recovery mode. We're in like, uh, internet recovery so like we got the globe spinning it's downloading everything online and it's going to walk me through a nice clean install of mac os right yeah um we start going and it gets about 25 percent of the way and then stops mm. and just doesn't ever install so after like three hours of it sitting there at like 25 percent i turned it off and marched it right into the apple store this thing is not like light by the way because it's full of like mpx modules and stuff right and i yeah, took it into them and i was like fix it uh -huh. and the guy is like okay well tell me what you did so i told him that whole story which you have to do three times every time you see like a tech or something right so i tell that story like three times and he's like okay well we're gonna try to do the t2 revive you know just see if we get maybe get a better luck than you did and then we'll just do we'll see if we can uh, reinstall from there i'm like okay go for it please like absolutely i would love if you had better luck than i did so he takes it in back. I'm sitting out there for like 20 minutes. He comes back. Yeah, well, I, the T2 revive worked uh, through configurator. So it, everything's looking good so far. Um, we're just going to reinstall Mac OS. Um, it's in internet recovery right now. So um, you can wait for the install to finish, or we can just go ahead and call you and you can come pick it up when it's done. I'm like, that's fine. Just remember, I did that. So we'll see if it gets past 25%. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, well, let's you know cross our fingers. Hopefully, we'll get back to you soon. Mm. That was two days ago, mm. and I have not heard a thing. Nothing? They so, haven't told you anything? Nope. Oh. I'm just saying, if wow. it was as simple as just getting that to reinstall at this point, I would have gotten a phone call two days ago that afternoon because I was in there in the morning. So uh, And they were already starting the install when I was there. So if that's what it was, if it was just reinstalling it, yeah. I think think i would have gotten a call that day they probably don't want a massive mac pro like sitting around if they can avoid it uh i would have gotten a call two days ago so now it's been a few days and i haven't heard anything so i'm like kind of thinking like maybe i should try to call them and see if they have yes. any, like if they can give me an update because i don't know so that's it it's still borked uh, it's still nothing yeah you gotta call them man that, that's crazy i mean two days they should have at least told you that day like i feel like they should have called you back that later it failed that or something 
just to say like BT dubs. Yeah. It's broken. I mean, unless they're trying to fix it all or like get you a new. Oh, I assume they're trying to do something. Yeah. But they're yeah, yeah. not going to do a hardware report or a hardware repair without telling me. Right. Cause they're right. not going to charge you. Um, they got to get your permission before they did right. like a massively expensive hardware repair. So I don't, I don't know. Wow. I have no clue. So maybe, yeah, maybe I'll try to call today. Maybe I'll get off this call. Well, they're not open for a little bit, but I'll, I'll call them maybe yeah. today and see if they have anything to tell me. The saga continues. My goodness. That's crazy. On a Mac Pro. Yeah, I'm doing all this editing on a M1 MacBook Air. And, like, it's fine. Like, it does work well. Like, I'm, yeah. it is surprising how, like, fast the M1 processor is, but it still stutters every once in a while. And I'm, like, losing frames during playback. Right. Uh, stuff like that. Like, it's still just not as smooth as, obviously, a Mac Pro is, which I'm mm. pretty glad about because they're not <laughs> comparable in terms of price. <laughs> right. So I am glad that the Mac Pro is still able to, you know, run it over. But, right, right. Yeah, it's been a little frustrating trying to get some videos edited on this guy. Wow. Well, the saga continues. Listeners, tune in next week for an update on Andrew's Mac Pro on Sleep Trackers. And pillows. Let us know about your pillows and stuff. And uh, anything else. If you got outdoor cameras, uh, if you are buying that $400 camera for some odd reason, which even though we told you not to do it, uh, you can let us know about that. <clears throat> Tweet at Andrew and myself. Let us know what you got going on HomeKit project-wise. Next week, I'm also going to talk about the Acara USB Hub it's like this little stick type hub where you can just plug it into a USB charger in the wall and it just kind of sticks up there like a little antenna. And I got that, so I'm going to set it up. I and... also have another thing to talk yeah. about next week. Um, <clears throat> look for some like uh, hands-on coming out on Tuesday on Apple Insider. It's a pretty cool one. Hand ringing in uh, the video. Okay, very cool. I'm excited for that. Also, subscribe to the Homekin Insider YouTube channel where you can watch the show. You can see my reaction to Andrew's killer Tauntaun joke. It just totally took you me off guard. You can see my reaction to Stephen saying weird words. <laughs> Which happened just imagine entire, a big old eye roll. Yes, this happened an entire episode. And we would appreciate a five-star rating and review in Apple Podcasts if you haven't done yet. If you haven't yet done that, it's the end of the show. Your There's words well. Moses supposes his toes are roses. Sorry, I had to do a little diction exercise there from theater. <laughs> like that <laughs> five star rating review and apple podcast that would greatly help out the show and let us know what you think there and again tweet at us that'll be in the show notes as well thanks for tuning in we'll catch you next time <laughs> finger guns <laughs>